Tony Stewart leading Casey Kane by 1.2 seconds. Scott Riggs bounced off the wall, went to the pits, no caution. It's big, it's bad, it's victory red. Go to foxsports.com slash Silverado for your chance to meet Dale Jr. and drive away in his all-new 07 Chevy Silverado. You know, it's just, I'm, I'm watching these guys, it's almost impossible to pass. You just got, the guy's got to just slide up the hill, way up the hill, give you a lot of room, because they just seem like they're all having trouble off the corner. Scott Riggs lost a few laps in the pits. He's back out on track. Here's what happened to the Valvoline number 10. That has all the look that the right front tire went soft on it. He was running fourth when that happened. All three Everham cars have been, had been having a great day to that point. I don't think this is what cars like Kurt Busch, the two car, uh, Matt Kenseth was looking for a long green run after they got off sequence. They needed to go about 30 or 40 laps to get a caution, then they would be have their track position. Looking back from Kurt Busch at Jimmy Johnson. You know what? This reminds me of the old days. <laughs> Everything about this whole weekend reminds me of the old days. Now, Scott Riggs' day just went from bad to worse. 30 miles per hour on pit road. You talked about it at the top of the show. You only have to go down your side of the pits. But Krista, too fast on pit road. He had to come back down through for a pass through. He's going to lose a couple more laps. And it was the busiest pit stall on pit road. You see everybody down here looking at the tires. These were the tires that came off Scott Riggs' car. The right front especially is corded. It is down to the court showing on the right front. We had everyone, Sammy Johns with the Everham team, Ray Everham himself, crew members from all different teams along the back stretch down here checking out these tires. Well, Krista, these cars are heavier on the right side than the old cars. And this is a little bit different tire than we've raced here before. It's supposed to be a little tougher, but nobody again knows just how much abuse, abuse that right side tire is going to take. Darrell, look at now. There's old school racing right behind Tony Stewart, the 43 and the 21 battling side by side. <laughs> it's just not Richard Petty and David Pearson anymore, but you know, that's pretty cool. That's old school. No, and there's a bunch of our new fans are saying, who are those guys anyway? <laughs> well, if we had an hour, we'd tell you. But. <laughs> <laughs> they are the two winningest drivers in NASCAR history. Richard yes, with 200 are. wins and David Pearson scored a lot of his 105 wins for the Wood Brothers. The King and the Silver Fox. That's right. There's Jamie McMurray in his Roush Fenway Ford running in fourth place. Steve Burns. Mike, Jamie McMurray was so disappointed after his season last year. He rededicated himself to his career. He's hired trainer in Tallahassee, Florida. You see his workout routine two hours every day except for race day. He wears a watch that records his heart rate, the oxygen levels, and it downloads to the trainer back in Tallahassee who can tell him how to change his workout to improve. He also eats only organic food, so if they don't improve, it won't be for a lack of trying. Steve, he has telemetry to his trainer? Looks like he's took a little bit of it up. You know, I, I think it's two things. The power of positive racing, coming in with a good attitude. The other thing is conditioning. And today, we're going to find out who's in the best shape, particularly if we go for long runs, like uh, long greens like we're going right now. That right there shows. Trouble turn two, David Reagan. Caution will fly. Caution will fly. Just saw the tail end of that one. And it'll be the third caution of the day. And there may have been contact from Juan Pablo Montoya. Watch the 42 and the 6. Yeah, looked like Montoya may have hit that apron just a little bit, shot him up the racetrack right into the left rear of the 6 car. Two rookies having a little conversation. Casey Mears will get the free pass. I tell you, there's a lot of people uh, that this caution will benefit, but to me, watching the score monitor, watching the racetrack, the person that benefits the most, our pole sitter, Jeff Gordon, he was not far from going a lap down in that 24 car. This is perfect, really. Now we've had a long run. Now you've got time to tell the crew, here's what I gotta have, and I gotta have it now. McMurray not the only driver on a new regimen this year. Tony Stewart in the offseason. 
also engaged a personal trainer. New diet, new training. And uh, the results paying off as Stewart has led 96 of the 121 laps here so far. Matt? Johnson running in the eighth position, still chasing the balance of the race car. Going to make some significant adjustments on the stop. Rich Gutierrez, the Jackman, making a big wedge adjustment. Also, the track bar, he just says the car, extremely tight. Kristen? Casey Kane's team director, Kenny Francis, is back this week. He's making the calls. Casey said the car is just a little bit tight. They're taking air out of the right rear and going up on the track bar. They are clear. Steve? Krista Elliott Sadler loves his Dodge. No adjustments whatsoever. Four tires. Terry Spalding and Tony Lunders changing the tires. Dick? As well as Tony Stewart is running, there is still more left in his race car. He has asked for more forward bike and more side bike. Shaggy Larson, the catch can guy, he's 6'6", and he just reached forward and made that chassis adjustment all by himself. And what, what the, he's looking for, forward bite, is the rear wheels hooking up when he under acceleration. Side bite is when they go off in the middle of the corner. He wants that whole car to feel like it's digging into the racetrack. And there you can see Kevin Harvick, the big gainer there on that race off pit road. Third caution flag of the day at Bristol. 122 laps to go. There's a tall drink of water <laughs> taking that, making that adjustment. <laughs> You can only do it a half at a time, but he's getting it. <laughs> getting ready for the restart. Kurt Busch got blocked in his pit, came in ninth, came out 16th. We're just about set to go. How about a word from Mark Martin? Hey, guys, good job so far, but don't you think it's time to crank it up? Conveyor belt, Bristol Motor Speedway, Tony Stewart back out front where he has been for 104 of 130 laps. You know, one thing I noticed, Darrell, listening to a lot of that in car audio is the fact that you heard Dick, Steve talk about these guys not having forward bite, the rear wheels are spinning up on acceleration. You could hear it all the way up on the straightaway, halfway down the straightaway. I believe the racing will improve. If we can get, a, get these cars in the pits a few times, make some adjustments, I believe the racing will improve. Cars already look better on this on this go round, but I tell you guys, not making very many friends. <laughs> Second cat in that 42 right now. He sails her off. Watch here, he ducks out like he's got a draft almost. Pours it down into. Ooh, he tried to get on the brakes too late. Poor old Kenny Schrader. Kenny Schrader already feels like he's got a bullseye. But what'd you say in the pre-race about Juan? Juan is a lonely number. Riding there with Jeff Burton. And how about Kurt Busch, Matt, got blocked in his pits, came in and couldn't get out. Forward bite issues on the racetrack, Mike. Forward bite issues on pit road. He's blocked in by Kyle Petty. Those two seconds cost him big in track position. Now he's running back in the 16th spot. Five-time winner here. He, like so many other people, fighting a tight condition. They made significant adjustments on the last stop. We'll find out shortly here as this run progresses if it fixes it. So 
know, the plan they had intact, it was working perfectly. You know, they got the caution. They moved up in the top ten by staying out on that caution we had back on lap 43. And it all Turn went away to on pit road. Montoya. Hold it, hold it, Here comes Dale Earnhardt it, Jr. Hold the Gordian effect is taking place. We're riding with Dale Earnhardt Jr. here. 42 got the inside right. wall a little bit. I don't know how bad he hurt it. We'll see how tough the nose is. Two cars got side by side in front of Montoya. He saw an opening on the bottom, went for it, and the hole closed up. Yeah, he did, and he, he did the right thing. He you know had a shot here under the six. 96 comes down, they make a little contact, and Juan goes around. I don't I, I don't know how much it uh, the nose looks like it's in pretty good shape. See it how it uh, jarred the front uh, hood there. Darrell, I believe he's having a hard time. He can't get it cranked right now or something. Fourth caution of the day in Bristol, Tennessee. Now, since it had only been about 11 laps since we went back racing, we had about seven of our lead lap cars come to pit road, including Dale Earnhardt Jr. for four fresh tires. Bobby Labonte got the free pass, so we now have 28 drivers on the lead lap. Our leader is Stewart. There's your leaderboard at the top of the screen. As we get ready to see them build speed on the restart, watching Denny Hamlin there for 50 miles an hour. And Stewart takes off. I just think this car shows the value of having knowledgeable teammates. You got 20, who's the teammate to 11. They're running first and fifth. You got the nine and the 19 running second and third. But unfortunately, Tony Stewart, Denny Hamlin's teammate, J.J. Yaley, they've had to carry that car behind the wall. Elliot, we heard Elliot Sadler loves his car and uh, He's just sent a message to his teammate. I need to get by, dude. I got somewhere I want to go. There you go. So he goes by him for second place. This car does look really good. Steve Burns. And Mike, after that pit stop, the team told Elliot that the tire wear was great. I asked Elliot this morning how this car of tomorrow felt compared to the other car. He said, Steve, it's like going from a passenger car to an SUV. I'd say that's a good analogy. It's shorter but wider and taller with a lot more headroom and the window post in a different place. So it's probably an apt comparison. Ooh, Montoya and Robbie Gordon got <laughs> together just a bit and neither one got the wall, but it was an almost. Hey, Larry. Juan ain't going to be a lonely number very long because they got a lot of people looking for him. <laughs> Not sure what J.J. ate. Oh, Trouble oh, turn one. Man. Pow. Hard lick. Walmendinger. Caution. Making his very first start of 2007. Had a pretty eventful qualifying lap, but it was fast enough to get in. We just bring her down into the pit road here, Ricky. We hit pretty hard. Now we're going to see what happens when one of those splitters gets broken, and can they repair it and get him back out? What happened here? I think he gets a love tap here going down into the corner. Oh, man, he started getting in trouble at the start-finish line. He uh, he was coming down on Kenny Schrader at the start-finish line, and that's a no-no. Yeah, I mean, Schrader was as low as he could go in the yeah. 21. I don't know if, if uh, A.J. thought he was trying to get out of somebody's way. That looked like a failure to communicate to me. Almost looked like his spotter was telling him in to the inside, but he, or, uh, he needed to go the inside, I believe. There it was. He came off for it. Looked like he might have made contact with the wall and bounced out Shot into down. Schrader. Something happened. And hooked him. Take him down the hill the way it was. Schrader's had a lot of fun today. A few more crumbs on the little Debbie car. Obviously, this ain't no piece of cake. You top that, Larry? I can't even go there. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. I'm just seeing who's coming to pit road. <laughs> Some things I just don't try to follow up on. <laughs> I hung around with Junior Johnson way too long today. <laughs> We're seeing some of the lead lap cars more or less at the back of the pack, including Jeff Gordon, who this is about the fifth caution, and this will be about his seventh pit stop with that 24 car, just trying to continue to make adjustments. But most of the lead lap cars elect to stay out under this caution. 
Almendinger was starting his first race of 2007. He also tried to qualify for a couple the season before. Bobby Labonte gets a pit stop. And we're under caution at lap 151 for the fifth time today. The record, by the way, is 20 yellow flags here. 